There's a lady whose channel I've been following for about three years, and that's Ginny Patel Thompson's Listen to Your Horse YouTube channel. She has a beautiful herd of horses, and her property, the new one out near Vernon in British Columbia, is so stunningly beautiful that I've asked her if it is possible to freeze some of her video frames and do some paintings of either just nature or of the horses out in the pastures and graciously she has said yes. The paintings that I'm doing they're going to be small they're going to be under A4 size and it is mainly because of the freight costs to get them from Australia to the other side of the planet. The one that I'm going to work on today it is just a very narrow uh, shot of some background trees, two horses running into the field, there's a golden light on the grasses and I've called it Heartland Reunion. The reason for that is Ordelina who is just the most beautiful divine mother energy, she is one of the horses that hadn't made the transition out to the new property. It's taken her three and a half years to get over her fear of getting onto a trailer and Ginny and her team have been working with her in the most kind-hearted way to overcome that fear and this painting is based on her reunion with her herd. This little painting is starting out with a pencil outline and then I'm going to do the oil painting over the top. So let's roll the intro and we'll get into how I painted Heartland Reunion. Ordelina has had a beautiful team of people assisting her in overcoming her fear of trailers and this is the image of the moment where she is willing to get on board and make a six hour journey to be reunited with her herd. Ordelina is being greeted by many of the members of the herd. And in the next video, you witness the explosion of activity as the horse tribe is reunited. I thought I'd turn this moment of Ordelina and Montaro coming together into a small oil painting. Some people who watch art videos find knowing what colours are used to be very important. I can list them here and they are titanium white, lemon yellow, peach, yellow ochre, burnt umber, crimson, raw umber, sap green, cerulean, ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple and Payne's grey but I don't tend to show the mixing process because every single mixture is completely unique there is no formula of 50% this and 50% that it could just be a tiny little amount that's picked up on the tip of a brush that is added into something so I'm just showing the paint going onto the canvas rather than the actual mixing process as horses are a fairly new subject for me to paint, I've decided to start out with a pencil outline just so I can get the proportions right.
Next to be painted is Montaro, whose colouring is lineback done. The reference photo makes him look like a grey horse, so I'm going to use artistic license and alter the colours. As I continue to work on Montaro and the grasses around the horses, I'll put some background music on and you can watch the painting evolve. To speed the process up, I've just made it double speed time. I hope you enjoy.
Hey viewers, I'm in one of my favourite spots out in nature. I've got a lot of trees behind me and they look like antennas pointing out the top of my head. So I've positioned myself up pretty high on the screen here, but just enough that you can still see the artwork. This is where it's at at the moment. Uh, a few things that I want to change. The trees I'm happy with, the leaves, they've got the sun sparkling on them. I think they're pretty good. Uh, coming forward, the horses, what I want is to make Montaro the star of the show. Even though the painting is about Ordelina and her arrival back into the herd, from an artistic point of view, it's actually going to be better if I make Montaro the star. The way I'm going to do that is to lighten this area of his chest and that will really move him forward. He's on one of those important grid lines too. When you divide a painting, vertically into thirds and then horizontally into thirds he's smack bang on one of those grid points so that's why I'm going to make him the focal point. The slope of the land it's like whoa really running off to the the foreground down here I'm going to level it out I'm going to get rid of the ridge that is up here and then bring this up a little bit more probably by about a centimeter. I like the enhanced photo that I used that had more of a gold light all through it. These, uh, these grasses, I'm going to intensify them, make them more gold, splash the gold up into Ordelina a little bit more as well. Now when I look at the hoofs, again I'm not really good with the anatomy of horses, but I find that Ordelina's front leg is a lot thicker than the others, so I'm going to have to thin that out a little bit. I'm not sure I like the angle of the hoof here, so I'm going to rework that area. All of the legs are the same uh, darkness of brown, and it looks like they're all coming out of one side of the horse's body. What I'm going to do is all of the back legs, I'm actually going to make them a little bit softer and a little bit lighter so that they fade into the background. I'm also finding that this shadow area is really competing for attention with the horses. I think it would probably be a better design if I brought more of these golden grasses down into this shadow area just to soften it. This one also, this shadow really takes your eye out of the painting. That will also be softened just to keep the eye circulating within the picture. Sorry, I've got some grasses waving in the breeze here and after that I think it should be finished. Once it's dry and varnished it will wing its way over to British Columbia and be a gift for Ginny. Please check out her YouTube channel. It's called Listen to Your Horse and it is just beautiful footage of the of the um, property and the horses who are called the Singing Horse Herd amazing animals they're really helping humanity with the ascension process definitely follow Ginny if you're interested in horses and especially the horses who have freedom and autonomy to choose how they want to live their life without being a tool um, of human use definitely I, I just love Ginny and all that she she does with uh, the completion of this painting I think I think there's about another eight that I would like to do taken from the video footage off Ginny's property. So if you like horses, please stay tuned to the Early Brush Late Brush YouTube channel and give a like. Pop in a couple of appreciative comments. I'd love to know whether you're learning anything or whether you're just happy watching the painting process. I put the painting away overnight and came back and had a fresh look in the morning. One of the things that I noticed was Ordelina's legs look too short for her body and I think that's because of the burdock plants obscuring the hoof area. I decided to take the opportunity to alter her leg position and see if I could add a little bit more action by adding um, the hoof up off the ground and the knee bent a little bit more. But in choosing a different reference photo, that was more side on, whereas in the first version, Montaro is actually sort of pushing Ordelina away and trying to make her turn to the right. The new position, the whole neck and head area didn't look right, so I scrubbed 
all of Ordelina off and did a third version. In this third version, I lightened her coat a little bit and I've angled the legs differently. When you count the legs, Ordelina has three, Montara has four, but there is just no way from an artistic point of view to add a fourth leg into that cluster. It's just too busy already. The human eye can ascertain that that is the horse that we're looking at and it doesn't need to have all legs shown. The brain fills in those details. I think that the final version will work. I will just put it away and come and have a look at it again tomorrow and see if I'm happy with it.